science to help you decide if you are compatible with your partner. So in today's podcast, CC and I, we're going to discuss some of the questions you can ask mm-hmm. to help determine if you are compatible or not. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Friends, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode. I am your girl, your host, Cece, and I'm joined by the other host. What's up, babe? I'm good. What's up? I'm good. (laughs) Hey, guys, this is Will. Welcome back to another episode. It's always a pleasure to have you guys with us. If this is your first time with us, please remember to subscribe and hit on the bell icon Mm -hmm. so you can be notified when videos like this one come out. This is a weekly podcast, and in this podcast, Sissy and I, we talk about... Love, life, family, relationships. Y'all know what we do here, so glad to have you here, okay? Absolutely, and as always, before we jump into the topic of the day, we always like to share something blissful that either happened to us or we did. What is your blissful moment this week? Well, as you guys know, well, some of you know that this week is Holy Week for those of you who are Christian. And what she's saying, it's it's church week. It's church week since Monday night. We've yes. been going to church yes. every night at 730 until 930. Yeah, we've been making it home at 10 o'clock. So we've been making it home at 10 o'clock. And it's been very holy. I might say it's been very holy for me. Yeah. Started with the retreat. Three days. We had a mass on Thursday. Thursday. And we had the... Good Friday. The Stations of the Cross on yes. Friday. Yes, yes, and yes. And later today, we're going to have another service. I don't know if I'm going to church later Starts today. Starts at sundown. I don't know if I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going today, so... Um, well, I'm probably going, because I... Well, you know how it is. <laughs> Wherever you are, I'm showing up, so... Yeah, but you know, this is... Uh, for COVID, we kind of took a break, and it feels it feels good going back. Yeah, you know, I was telling my husband last night, I was like, um... The, the, the priest, let's just, let's just put the credit where the credit needs to go. The priest who preached the, uh, the retreat. The, retreat. Okay. the whole week, y'all. And I was like, babe, I don't care whether it feel like an older person or millennial, you will get something out of the out of the the preach this week. The priest was preaching. Yes. He was great. I mean, I don't know, maybe some people, maybe he was just like, you know, just a regular preach. But to me personally, I feel like there's a lot of good key points that he touched on. He talked about on Tuesday, um, the good shepherd and the sheep, how husband needs to be the shepherd and the wife needs to be. the. I mean, there were just so many great things. And of course, what I love about it, where we are able to get home and talk about, the, you know, how good the serpent was. And my mom, of course, is like, where's the shepherd? I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> no, your husband. <laughs> Right, yes, but it's 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 fun. It's educating. It's yes, spiritual. Obviously, yes, we yes. we were preparing for Easter. Yes, that's, that's the whole idea behind right, the retreat services throughout the whole week is to really yes. get us in the mindset of reliving the resurrection of Christ. And yes, what it means for us as Christian, and how do we live our lives better? Yeah, after Easter. Yeah. So, um, but yes, it it feels good being reengaged. Is yes, we we COVID, we we didn't attend these additional services as yeah. much. In fact, Caesar didn't attend any of them. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll attend church and that's it. But but it's good to be able to do these extra stuff. It really it really puts us in the spirit of what what had happened during that time, what we're celebrating, the sacrifices we're making. And obviously leading to Easter Sunday, which is right. a big celebration. I know last year I miss the, <laughs> not the church service for Easter, but the celebration afterwards because I accidentally committed to a client on that day, not realizing that was Easter. Hey. And it's after the client I'd already put in their deposits and everything that I could Signed the contract. <laughs> so this year, anyone that I had to put on on contracts i looked at the date <laughs> i made a promise to myself and to my family that events like this i will never get that yeah. confused yeah but, uh, but yeah it feels good it's been a good week 
Yeah. And I think it's going to wrap up with a bang on Sunday. It's been a good week. And the kids also, to you know, have enjoyed going to church every night. Yes, they have to be up the next morning. The good thing about our daughters is they don't have to be up at 6 o'clock because they're homeschooled. So they get to sleep until 8 o'clock. And then 8.30, they up and get ready for class at 9.30. Yep. So much for our blissful moments. I'm hoping that some of you guys are doing you're Christian, maybe you're doing the same thing for mm-hmm. Easter, but uh, whatever you're doing, I hope it is something that helps you bring some value to your life. And please, on Easter, listen, turn up. Listen, it's a party, it's a celebration. Turn up because we're turning up on Easter. Easter, we're turning up, okay? That's I guess tomorrow. I have no choice but to turn up. Listen, the party, and I will make sure we vlog it so you guys can see how we celebrate on Easter. All right, so. Stay tuned. <laughs> now let's get into the topic of the day, which is compatibility. How yes. do you make sure that you are compatible with your partner? That's a good question. Now, compatibility is is a crucial aspect for any relationship. Absolutely. Right? And, and for that reason, we want to explore some questions that you can ask mm-hmm. to help you determine if you're compatible or not with either the person that you've already gotten with or yeah. maybe if you're planning on getting with someone. Yes. You know, so some of us may be already in a relationship and you may be considering taking it to the next level. That's right. And it'll make no sense to go to the next level if you're not compatible with this mm-hmm. person. We're hoping these questions can provide you some valuable insight into whether or not you and your partner are compatible. Yeah, I know. We were. We've been married for uh, she can't 14 she years. Can't Whatever. Years. That's not true. Huh? Huh? 14 years. Um, so, therefore, we have. That's how I remember. Whatever, whatever of course. Is at the end of the year. <laughs> I know that's that. <laughs> that is so messed up. So, yes. Um, we're not just fluffing things. We are talking about based on our, our experience and when we were dating, because we did it for five years before we got married. So mm-hmm. it's, it's been a long time and, to and me. It, oh, yes. It, it has been a long time. And, and I'll tell you, when we started out, yes, we would look for things in common. But mm-hmm. when it comes to compatibility, it's not just about having similar interests and values. Right. It, it, it's about understanding uh, understanding each other. Yes. And not at a shallow level. I'm talking about really understanding what. Well, on what, a deeper level yes what's important to yes. you yes how you view things yes how do we want to live life together right right um, your family values mm-hmm. uh, political affiliations um, <laughs> religious all of these things played into the compatibility yeah. aspect for, for us and, and i'll tell you if if you can make sure that you are compatible that ensures that you're a good fit for each other and it avoid it helps avoid issues in the future. Yes, because listen, you gotta be able to handle what I say, which would be the first one, which is conflict, right? Mm-hmm. How do you handle conflict being with someone that? Well, first we gotta try that. We need to know if we can handle each other. Well, you, you got. I think that's one of the first questions you gotta ask, or you know, need to find out how do we, mm-hmm. or how do you, right, handle conflict? Now, some people are. They're quick to anger. They they quick to call names. They're quick to shut down. Mm-hmm. They 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 quick to give up. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you find just being able to communicate in that relationship, that in itself can be a challenge. Sometimes yes. you may communicate a certain way, mm-hmm. I may communicate a different way. And if our style of communications are differ a lot, yeah, that in itself can be issues. Yes, it can. And I think sometimes um, there's a lot of us. I know me. I, in the beginning of our relationship, I didn't have an anger problem. I bought her a book. (laughs) I I didn't have an anger problem. I just feel like I'm very easily to get aggravated. (laughs) I bought her a book. You did. Yes, I did. And I think it was an anger management book. Was that the first thing I bought you? No, it can't be the first thing, maybe. Of course, for those of you who've been with us for a long time, you guys know we we were, you know, we, we, we knew each other from church. And then from the youth group, from there, we friends. And after friends, we did it after two years when being I friends. she had issues. And then... 
That's not true. That's not true. And listen, speaking of communication, the next question I think anyone else should ask is, or you should ask yourself, do you feel that it's it's okay for you to speak up? Do you feel safe? Do you feel safe? Yes. To speak your mind? Because I am going to speak my mind. At some point, listen, it takes time. It takes time. Yeah. It took me some time mm-hmm. for me to be able to voice my opinion, to voice. But man, I'll my... tell you, when she realized that she could, there was no stopping. Her. <laughs> but you know what? Communication is 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 the foundation for compatibility. But more importantly, it's the foundation for any close relationship. You yeah. have to be able to communicate yeah. with your partner. Yeah. If you can't do that, mm-hmm. you have problems. Especially if you don't feel safe to say what you want to say. You don't feel safe to express your opinions. You feel like you're walking on eggshells and you're having to control and watch whatever you say yeah. because you're afraid that you may upset your partner. Yeah, That's anxiety. Yeah. Or you feel scared. You feel like, man. And I know people who actually, unfortunately, have partners like that where they're not able to, you know, speak on how they feel about certain things and unfortunately it is it it's it's tough mind you if you like on that beginning stage right if yeah. you like boyfriend and girlfriend and you're like in that first stage of life of your relationship and you're not able to speak your mind it, it can be tough so if you can't speak <laughs> i don't think you're compatible or maybe built up the confidence or openly talk about mm-hmm. it but if you feel like you can't say what you want to say because yeah. you express this and before you know it it turns into yeah. an argument yeah. out of nowhere yeah that's a problem it is a problem and if you're if listen if your man or your girl is upset all the time whenever you bring something up to the table they get upset they get irritated like uh-uh we are not having this Cause I'm gonna tell you this. Cause if we are dating, and I've noticed that you get easily irritated, get, right. get upset, or some people are quick at um shutting you down. You know, you just you bring did up something. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but then again, you know, she, she, she's got problems. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I was saying, I was uh, 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 as I was saying. If you find that your ideas are being shut down, you you're being you, you're being suppressed in, in some ways that yeah. you're almost like you can't do your own thinking. Everything right. has to get done for you. Right. You're told what to do. You're told when to do it. You're told how to do it. Not here. And if you happen not to do as you were told, mm-hmm. you get disciplined. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. You know. And, and, and if you realize that you can't do it through this early on and you haven't been able to fix it, you got to ask yourself, if I go to the next level in this relationship, will there ever be a time mm-hmm. that I can openly share my yeah. thoughts and opinions with my partner? And yeah. if you can't see a time where that could happen, that's a sign that you guys are not gelling. You know, if this continues where you can't speak your mind, um, mm-hmm. you'll never be able to lean into the relationship to get to the level of intimacy that you may need yeah. or the support that you may need to, to carry on. Right. So these are all the more reasons as you realize that you always being shut down, mm-hmm. you got to get to a point where you have to make a decision. You know, this relationship is not working. For you. Yeah. Either we fix it now or we part ways. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, the, the next question you, you should ask yourself is, does the relationship feel balanced? Obviously, we just talked about not being able to speak your mind, not right. being able to feel safe to speak. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what we're talking about here is, yes, you may be able to speak, but the relationship still feel lopsided in a way mm-hmm. where it's it's always about the other person's wants, the other person needs, and, and it always dominates the relationship. Mm-hmm. Where you 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 kind of turn turn into okay, I'm just there to please you right. and, and satisfy you and right. do everything you want, yeah, and nothing that I want. Mm-hmm. A relationship like this with that level of imbalance is no way. Yeah, because yes, from the beginning it may seem you know what I'm gonna kind of play along, mm-hmm. but the moment you realize that this person is all about themselves and never you, yeah. It's not a relationship for you. Yeah, it's not. It's actually a red flag. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
It's actually a way for you to get yourself out of that relationship because, listen, you may invest it a few years, but it's just a way for you to get out. You, this is not the person for you. Yeah, it's not. The, and, and, He's you know, not the one. You and I said before you before you give up, because sometimes people are not, especially at the early stage of the relationship, you can openly have a conversation yeah. with this person and and, and kind of lay out some maybe some of the expectations mm-hmm. you have in terms of, you know. Right. I have some needs. I have some wants. I'd like to be able to, because remember, you can speak your mind. You 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 you're not feeling unsafe mm-hmm. to speak. Speak your mind and kind of lay it out there. Now, at this point, you can kind of determine is that person really, you know, the way they function is all yeah. about them. Yeah. Now, if that's the case, then yes, you part ways. You know, because in a relationship like this, you are never going to be taken seriously. Mm-hmm. You know, you're always going to be minimized and dismissed. Yeah. Because the other person's wants and needs are yeah. to dominate. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, baby. You're dropping some great gems right now. You know? Yes. And I think um, it's important to know if we share the same values, right? Yeah. And earlier you talked about, you know, religion and you talk about some stuff, but... You know me, I'm not into politics like you You and my brother can be, and my dad and my mom. <laughs> but I think it's important for you to know if we share the same values, if we really have the same view on things. Yeah, it's important. I mean, I know for you, politics may not be something that you open to, but mm-hmm. if I feel a certain way about certain, you don't typically have much opinions to debate mm-hmm. me on it. Mm-hmm. And we don't have these conversations as much. Yeah. I'll just share with you whatever. But, but at least it's not turning into arguments. Right. Imagine if you were maybe the opposite of what I think. Mm-hmm. And every time I mention something, it turns into an argument. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. But, you know, the other values you got to think about. Like, for instance, we both wanted kids. Mm-hmm. We both wanted to settle in a certain place. Yeah. Uh, buy our homes in a certain place. Um, work, doing a certain type of work being able to support you in your endeavors and you're supporting me in mine. Right. So we laid out some of these things that are important to us early on mm-hmm. and we work at those things. Mm-hmm. And I say work because although we may want to support each other, we may want, we may want to be there for each other. That doesn't mean we won't run into challenges. Mm-hmm. And when you share values and you understand what's important to each other, right. You must be willing to make the sacrifices to help yeah. them. And yes, you got to ask, are we, are we on the same page? Right. Right. <laughs> and I think it's important for you to check, keep checking. Are we on the same page? Um, how things are going? And I think it's important for you to, you know, to, to do these checking from oh, time yeah. to times. Um, because we want to make sure we have the same view on things. We want to make sure we have our, our futures looking bright. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. And you know, this, this, this stems from, you know, setting priorities and, and what you want to do with your life, you know, at some level about, you know, your personal philosophies and, and, and the meaning of life itself. Because mm-hmm. once you set those priorities with your partners, we'll all know what's important to each other. Or we won't be making assumptions right. about what's important to you. Because yeah. if we lay these from the get-go, these are the things that are important to us. And this is how we want things to be. Everything is out in the open, yeah. clear, and understood by both parties. Yeah, in the beginning of our relationship, I know one thing for sure we both, like you said earlier, wanted is to have a family, to raise a family, to for sure buy a house. Because my husband's like, no, we're not renting. At the time, <laughs> thank God, at the time, you know, real estate wasn't as crazy as it is now. Oh, yes. But <laughs> 2010, we bought our, um, our, our first home. 2009. 2009, 2009. We got married in 2010. That's right. So we did it See, very. I got, my, I got my dates right. Okay, baby, you do, you do. So yeah, we one thing we know for sure from the beginning, we don't want to rent and we don't want to move in after, we don't want to move in and then get married. We want to make sure we do the way we want to make sure things goes. And yes. then of course we work towards that to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the biggest thing that this, having this plan did for us, it, it eliminates, any chances of being disappointed. Yes, frustration. It cuts down <laughs> all types of frustration. Yes. And obviously she didn't resent me, although I made a decision without her being there, but she's happy with it. Yes. Um, she, but, you know what I like? Yeah. I know you what know what I like. like? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But we, but you know, those things didn't just happen. Mm -hmm. We planned them. Right. We stated what we wanted and how Mm -hmm. we wanted to do it. And we made sure that we had a chance to do it. Yes, of course. Because you and I, we have very similar view on things. Very uncertain things. Uncertain things. (laughs) So the next question is you, you, you gotta, you gotta ask yourself, how do you plan on spending your time? Either Mm -hmm. time individually or time together. Mm -hmm. Is some people are very open, very outgoing. That's and right. They're the type that they want to be out every weekend. Mm, you know, the, not the typical here. Typical extrovert. <laughs> not and here. Some people are the normal, typical introvert. They just yeah. want to be to themselves. Yes. Most of the time. Me time alone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and, and you have to take that into consideration. Yes. Um, if yes. you're an extrovert and, and you, you know, you, you don't mind staying out at work and, and late and and doing things out with your friends on a regular. Uh, that's what the idea of having fun for you and maybe your partner. The idea of having fun is to just <laughs> lay on the couch and get in, get under the blanket and relax. What and a binge good, watch! Yes, stuff. binge watch um, shows on Netflix or you know. And watch a few movies like my husband usually does. So the good thing about us, we're both introverts, so we really don't have that problem. Yeah, but we, at the same we, time. Listen, in some way, I think we're mixed. And here's what mm-hmm. I say. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, she likes staying home, but sometimes she likes to go out. But I don't want to be home all the time. <laughs> As I say, we have completely, and she likes to socialize. Yes, sometimes she Who, likes me to. me like to socialize, baby? Yes. I don't like to socialize. You sure? Yes. You sure? Maybe it's only amongst family. And I'll tell you, we go out and she's somewhere. The conversation don't stop. I'm trying to leave <laughs> and she's not. Well, so, if we're talking about something that's very, very dear to my heart. That's socializing. Then I'm going to make sure that we keep talking until we get to... We get like somewhere with it. Easter Sunday's coming and I know we're going to be at the gathering at our parents. I don't know what I'm going to do for the next day because I do have to go to work. I'm staying out know. late. <laughs> but there's a difference between when I'm around family. I'm really, really like put my hair down. Let's have a good time. Right. Yeah. Especially when I'm around my sister-in-law. Sometimes we can't help it to be crazy. Okay. However, when I'm around networking, with, like when we go to networking event, I'm like on my phone. Or I'm holding on to you, or I just need to not talk to people. But networking is supposed to talk to people. This is why I don't want to be around people that I don't know. Like, I would rather stay okay. home. Like, we go to a networking event. We'll take the notes. We'll, you know, we listen to the speakers and have a good time. But we don't mingle and go around afterwards. <laughs> we pick up and go. And we. this is what introverts does. We go to events. We get notes. We come home. Yeah, I guess she is extreme. <laughs> Whatever. She 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 only opens up with family. I am. It just depends. Yeah, but you know, going back to if if your if your partner is like that, you gotta understand that's how they are. Right. You know, if you're the type of like to hang out at the bars and yeah, hang, have hang out with your friends, conversation with strangers. Yeah. If if your partner is not like this, you have to understand that. That doesn't mean you can't be with someone while you're an extrovert and introvert. You just yeah. have to understand. Right. And you have you have to make sure that you create time that you can spend mm-hmm. with each other. Yeah. Because your time alone, like for for an introvert, their time alone is they just want to be by themselves yeah. and they don't want to be bothered. Nope. Your time alone may be hanging out with someone else other than your spouse, but you're always in the presence of someone else. But you got to think of, okay, if we're going to yeah. spend some time together, how are we going to do that? Right. And as long as you can find a way where you're not completely neglecting your partner yeah. that you can spend yeah. time together but you understand that there are times that they want to be left alone mm-hmm. you're good and if you can't deal with that then you have problems yeah and i know some couples who where the wife likes to be out all the time and mm-hmm. um the husband will go out but not all the time and i know another couple where the husband likes to be out all the time every weekend he wants to be out some Even if like the that. wife don't want to go out, he's like, you know what? I'm stay. I'm, 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 I'm going out with my boys, and then you do you. Then it's, it doesn't work like that. If I'm out, if I'm out with my friends, or 
I don't know. It, for me, once it'll bloom on, that would happen. I just don't see it happening as a married woman, like where I'm ha- out with friends constantly all the time and then my husband is home or vice versa. I mean, and this is where it comes down to you have to set your relationship in a way that works yeah. for you. Yeah. For some people, like, yes, the type of person you are, if I was the type who wants to be out every weekend, we'll have problems. Yeah. But it could be very different for someone else. They may right. be okay with it. Listen, yeah. Your time going out on the weekend, that gives me time to be by myself <laughs> and do my own thing. So go, just let me be. <laughs> with the kids. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we can set things the way that works for us. Mm-hmm. And this is where it's important that you got to look at those questions to see, okay, how do we want to spend time alone? Yeah. And how do we want to spend time together? Right. You know, because um, some people likes to have dinner together every night. Yeah. And then binge watch Netflix for a couple hours. Yeah. More some, some people, people like to hang out with their video games and it, it comes down to finding out what works for you. Yes. And make sure that you both understand. Yes. This is kind of how I do things. Yes. And as long as we, we are willing to accommodate each other yes. when it comes time to spend with each other. Right. I think we're good. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree because listen, my husband was a party animal. I probably would not be here today if you were. Okay. If you were. And good thing I'm not a party. Good animal. thing. Well, I think God I mean, if I go to a party, I do want to enjoy the party. Oh boy. If there are people at the party and they happen to be at my table <sighs> and they engage in conversation, I will talk to them. That's the type of person I am. I'm okay with that. Did I say you're not okay? Well, with why that? do I feel like you're trying to say something here? No, I'm not saying this. You know, sometimes we, we at a party and I Listen, music is good, and I want to dance. Uh huh. And this woman's be like, I don't want to put on a show. I it's don't want to put. put show. Listen, it's not dancing. No, if there's no one on the dance floor, but I feel like dancing. I am not going to be on the dance floor all the time. But I feel like dancing. But I don't mind dancing like one song. But for us but to I just like stay on the, the dance. Listen, <laughs> if 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 there's like a party where. There's a bunch of people, and we're the only one that dance like for a good two or three songs. We, we it looks songs like we're putting up a show, and I'm not about to do that as an introvert. See what I, mean? I am going to <laughs> sit on the chair and uh, and feel the music. Oh, she'll be in the back. No, Listen, I'm not. I understand. And mm-hmm. yes, if I go to a party and she's like, I'm sitting it up. I'm, I'm one of those people. I don't like to be the center of attention. I'm a shadow girl. I'm a shadow girl. All ideas that I may have, whether if it's like business or whatever else it is, I will put you in the spotlight and then I'll be in the shadow. I'm a shadow girl. I don't want to be like, you know, all attention on me because I don't want it. I don't like it. Okay. I'm not an attention seeker. That I'll tell you that right now. (laughs) Sometimes I'm not looking for the attention, but the attention is like seeking for me. And I'm like, listen, (laughs) Hey, you know, when you set things and you understand how a person, you know, what's important to them and how they function. Yes. And that, 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 that helps you deal with moments like this, where I may feel like dancing, <laughs> even if no one else is dancing. Okay. But because I know how this woman function, I know that she doesn't want this attention. woman. I just love when you say that. I know how this woman, <laughs> like I'm just like some type of woman. No, you're my wife. You are my wife, but I've been mm. talking about, you know, understanding who you are with. Mm. The last question, or at least for us, the last yes. question I think you should ask is, what are the non-negotiables? Or so set that really early on. Yes. Like the type of things that if you do them in that relationship, it's uh, it's gone. Kind of like of a deal breaker, right? Yeah, the deal breaker type yeah. of thing. You know? Yeah. So I didn't have one for you. <laughs> let me not say anything. <laughs> but, 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 you know, set the boundaries... And, mm-hmm. and make sure that you and your partner understand what those boundaries right. are. Right. Because um, we all have certain things that we will not tolerate. Yes. And make sure that you let these things be known early on. Let them be known early and on. And see where your partner stand. Because mm-hmm. if, uh, they, for instance, you may be with someone who's madly jealous. And you may have tons of friends of the opposite sex. If hanging out with these friends will cause issues. Mm-hmm. Just know what you shouldn't do with those friends. 
Right? Now, I'm not saying don't have those friends. But that if you don't want to go and hang out at your... No, I've never gone on and go hang out. You didn't hang out, but you had a lot of a lot of opposite sex friends. People that I see in church. (laughs) A lot of them. Because you know, my husband is the Mr. the 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 Mr. Good Guy as well. Yes. I I, I don't look for reasons to be mean to people. No one says you have to be mean to people. (laughs) And if someone comes to hug me, I used to be able to hug you, but I don't hug anymore. What, what what stopped that? Well, you married. This woman here. You married. <laughs> but but you know, set the non-negotiables, the things that 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 could cause issues. Can I hug people at the church? You can hug people. No, I have you, no problem with you hugging. You so you are. Why are you lying to those to the viewers, baby? I have no worries with you hugging. You said that smirk on his I face. I give the biggest hug and the best hug, so you can never get a hug better than mine. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to where you see she's making me go out mm-hmm. and just you know discussing things that's not part of this, but set those boundaries, set those those non negotiables early on. Yes. Just so your partner knows that those yes. are the things that you just don't do. Right. And if you do them, you can kiss this relationship goodbye. Hey. You know, and, and that allows you and your partner to make sure that you know where the line is and 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 be able to to build a strong and healthy relationship. I was just about to say that. Yeah, because yes. when we understand where we are and, and what's okay and what's not okay. Yeah, and I think it goes for when you're dating someone new too. If you're dating someone, it's good to set boundaries. It's good for you to have some of these like deal breakers. If this doesn't work, I'm sorry. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, you all these things. You can't have two that- girlfriends at the same time. <laughs> But you know, hey, listen, these things that we've um, we've gone over, these questions that we've gone over, I think I think they're just a few. There's a whole lot. Oh, more yes, there's a whole lot. Yes. But I'm hoping that these uh, can provide you some valuable insight into how you can determine your compatibility with your partner. Right. Now, remember, compatibility isn't just about finding someone who's exactly like you. Mm-hmm. It's about finding someone who compliments you. Yes. support you yes and you can enjoy that journey that relationship journey with right that, that life journey with right you know it's important for partners to be willing to step up mm-hmm. you know say what you need from the start yes and, and continue yes. being being able to say what you right need. you know um learn to celebrate those little wins in your relationship together because mm-hmm. that's important because as you celebrate wins it, it keeps strengthening the bond you have right and and, and realize that your relationship will change as you change. Mm-hmm. 14 years ago, I wasn't the man that I am today. That is true. Same here. Right? She had anger issues. Now she no longer <laughs> has it. But Whatever. You know, we naturally change and expect our relationship to change. Yeah. One thing that I hate that people do sometimes, like, I remember when you used to be. Mm-hmm. Yes, I used to be that. I have changed. Right. And sometimes... Yes, some changes can happen where the person become worse, but sometimes we see it as being worse because it's different than what they were. Right. They were maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So expect that things will change. Yeah. Address those changes. Not so much want to take the person back to where they were, but look to see now with the changes that we have now, how do we continue living and we continue building this life? And and take, obviously, take inventory of where you are. Mm Mm-hmm. And make sure that you take into account what both of you need. Yes. And at the end of the day, you'll live happy. That's right. You know, the other day, um, um, Cece shared a, a Bible verse with me, and I, and I made it a point to remember to share it with you guys. Um, it's from Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastes. <laughs> I always have problems saying this thing. It's Ecclesiastes 4 verses... Nine, nine through, through ten. ten. Mm-hmm. It says two are better than one mm-hmm. because they have a good return for their labor. That's right. If either one of them falls down, one can help the other up. Yes. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to back them up. Yes. You know, in a relationship, this is why we get together. We get together to build a life together. Right. And obviously, we all are carrying our own weight. Mm-hmm. Where if I'm falling or I, I stumble, mm-hmm. you're there to catch me. Right. Or if you stumble, 
I'm there to catch you. Mm -hmm. So that's life. You know, so build your relationship, build it on, on solid principle, build it on the words of God, and be willing to make sacrifices for each other. But make sure yes. that you are compatible with each other. That's right. I agree. You know, yes. but hey, listen, guys, I'm hoping that these things we've shared with you give you some insight on what you can do to make sure that you're good with your partner. Mm -hmm. So today we appreciate you guys for joining us on this podcast. We can wait to hear your experience. So please share with us how you've handled or, or how were you able to determine if you are were compatible with the person that you are with right now. Right. Or if you, if you were able to determine that person is no good for me, mm -hmm. what were some of the things you looked into and how did you come to that conclusion? Good question. So please remember to share, like, and subscribe to the podcast. Yes. Until next time, keep loving and stay blissful. Peace. Bye.